Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably already know that with a recent release of Lightroom, Adobe introduced AI noise reduction. I've already done a couple videos on it, and after those videos posted, several people commented that they would like to see me do a video or videos comparing the new AI noise reduction in Lightroom. They call it Denoise AI, by the way, versus other AI noise reduction applications that are available, such as Topaz Labs Denoise AI, On One's No Noise AI, and Luminar Neo's Noiseless AI. Well, that's what we're going to be doing. This is the first in a set of videos where I'm going to be comparing Lightroom's new Denoise AI versus the others. In today's video, we're going to compare it to Topaz Labs Denoise AI. And for all the videos, I'll use the exact same image so that ultimately we could compare them all to one another. We're going to be using this image of the bald eagle. You can see it was shot at ISO 12,800 and it absolutely has no processing done to it at all. Hit reset over here. So nothing has been done to it. And you can see that it has a considerable amount of luminance and color noise. Now, I'm going to send it into Lightroom's Denoise AI first. And to do that, you just go into the Develop module, open up the Detail panel, and you can see I have sharpening all the way down. And we'll go to the manual noise reduction. You can see how that's turned all the way down as well. So all we're going to be using is the Denoise section of the Detail panel. So I'll click there. And it has one slider. So it's very simple to use. And the amount is preset, at least for this image on my computer, to 100. I saw some people commenting saying that they were getting this set at 50 for some images, but I've never encountered that. So I'm just going to leave it at 100 and I'm going to click Enhance. And what Lightroom's Denoise AI does, it creates a new file and it is a raw file. It's a DNG file. And the nice thing about this type of DNG file that Lightroom creates is it preserves all your camera matching profiles. Often when you use an external application that creates DNG files from your original manufacturer or raw file, you'll lose your camera matching profiles. That isn't the case when you use Denoise AI from within Lightroom and you can see it already did it. And just quickly, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I go to the basic tab and I open up the profile browser, you see these camera matching profiles. These are the profiles that are inside the camera. This happened to be taken with the Nikon D500 and you can see that they're all there. So, um, and then if I go over to the raw file, the original raw file, you can see those camera matching profiles are there. And that's um, one of the downsides sometimes of using plugins. Even if they create a DNG raw file, you lose those camera matching profiles. Well, when you use Lightroom's Denoise AI, it, it isn't the case. You'll keep those camera matching profiles. But I digress. Let's look at the noise. We'll zoom in. And you can see that this is the original raw file. There's a considerable amount of noise. And then we'll go to this new file. And you see it got rid of the noise fine. Now I'm going to rename this so we could keep them straight. So to do that, I'm going to go to the library module and then I'm going to hit the F2 key on my computer. You have to do that from the library module in order to rename this. So I'm going to call this Lightroom Denoise AI and we'll click OK. All right, now I'll hit the uh, I key couple times and you can see that this now is Lightroom Denoise AI.DNG and the original raw file is here. Now we're going to stay on this original raw file and we'll send it into Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. Unfortunately, when I do that, uh, I cannot send a raw file. That's a thing with Lightroom. You just can't do that when you use external plugins. Uh, in most cases, you'll have to send it either as a TIFF, PSD or a JPEG. Uh, so we lose that raw capability, and I'll lose those camera matching profiles as well. So we'll click, uh, we'll right click right on the image. We'll go to, to edit in and over and down to Topaz Denoise AI. And then, as I mentioned, we can't send the original raw file. We'll have to send a TIFF, and I'll keep these default settings here, and we'll click edit. So Lightroom, you can see in the top left-hand corner, there's a progress bar. 
Lightroom's creating that TIFF file with those specs and it will open it up directly into Denoise AI. Now, for those of you not familiar with uh, Topaz Labs Denoise AI, you do have the capability to use it as a standalone app. And when you use it as a standalone app, you could put in a raw file, a manufacturer raw file, like an icon raw file, and you could save it as a DNG file. So it isn't limited in that regard. Uh, it's just when you use it as a Lightroom plugin, it's limited that way. Now, I have it set to comparison view. You could see at the top there's several different views. And one thing right off the bat, uh, those of you not familiar with Topaz Labs Denoise AI, I believe it was the first AI noise reduction application made available a few years ago. And it's been updated many times since then. So you have a lot more control with Denoise AI, a lot more features, a lot of different uh, AI models that you could use to remove noise. So it may not work as well for one image compared to, let's say, Lightroom, but it will work better with a different image because it has an AI model that works better than Lightroom's single AI model. So with that said, you can see I have it set up into comparison view. In the top right-hand side, there's several different views, single view, split view, side-by-side -side view, comparison view. I like to be in comparison view because with comparison view, I could see four of the five different AI models at one time. Now, I do have a series of videos where I go through all the ins and outs of all the Topaz Labs plugins. That includes not only Denoise AI, but Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI, and Photo AI. I have all those in a playlist. I'll have that playlist in the description below this video. And also, these videos that I'm going to be doing in this series, I'll have those in a playlist as well. And I'll have that listed in the description below this video. Now, I have it set to comparison view. I'm looking at four different AI models at one time. I'm going to reposition it over the eagle's eye, beak, and then part of the background. And you can see you have to wait for each of the different AI model views to re-render. Now, I like to do it this way because I can compare them to one another and determine which one of the four is best. Now, the top left-hand corner is standard. You can see that it's active. It has the blue box in the lower left-hand corner, and it's on automatic settings. So these two sliders are set automatically. Click to clear. That is also on automatic. I'll click to the lower left, low light, and you can see that one's not on automatic, so I'll put it on automatic because I like to compare them to one another in an equal way, so they're all set to auto. And severe noise is on the lower right, and that is auto. And just glancing at them, um, it does appear that low light is the best. Uh, you can see that clear did a good job, but if you look at the background here, it looks kind of mottled, and so does uh, the severe noise. But the low light one looks nice and creamy and even, and it's just as sharp as the other ones. So what then I'll do is if I want to see the raw version, I'll pick the worst one, which is standard, and I say see the raw AI model because that's the only one that isn't being displayed. So I'll click on the worst one, make that active, then just click on this raw one, and it will swap out this one in the top left with the raw model. You can see that still isn't as good as low light. So I'll click on low light, make that active, and then I'll go to single view. Then you have to wait for it to re-render. I'll let it re-render, and then I'll do any tweaking that I feel it needs. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I try to enhance sharpness a little more. We'll try moving that up a bit. You again have to wait for it to re-render. Um, one thing that I hear often from a lot of photographers with Denoise AI is that it runs very slow on their computers. If you do have a computer that's a bit older, it doesn't have a more updated graphics card, you may find that it runs very slow. So don't buy it right away if you don't owe it. They do have fully working free trials. Download the fully working free trial and try it before you buy it and make sure it runs on your computer. I'm thinking though, if it doesn't run well on your computer, that Lightroom's Denoise AI isn't going to run much better because I've heard a lot of people say they have older computers and Lightroom's Denoise AI takes forever to process an image. So um, if that's the case and they're both running slow, you may want to wait until I do videos on the other two. That is No Noise AI from, to uh, from On One and Noiseless AI from uh, Luminar and see what those, how those do. And those have fully working free trials as well. 
So anyway, enhancing sharpness seemed to have done a pretty good job. I could try to recover original detail here with this slider, but often when you do that, you'll reintroduce some of the noise. So you have to be careful with that. So I'll just move it way up. And I could see that it reintroduced noise actually right in here. It's maybe hard to see in a video. So I like to keep that relatively low if I use it at all, just usually at around 10. Color noise reduction. There was some color noise here, but the um, low light AI model seemed to have knocked that out. If you do see some more like color noise, those are usually just red, green, and blue tiny dots. Then you could just move this to the right. But I think this is um, pretty good. So right away, you could see with Denoise AI, you have a lot more control, a lot more fine tuning you can do. That's great, but that could be bad if you're in a hurry um, and you you know you just photographs like a big event or something and you have a lot of images to process. It is very time consuming compared to maybe what you would get if you just use Lightroom's Denoise AI. All right, so this is the image from Topaz Labs, Denoise AI. I am going to, again going to rename this. I'll hit the um, F2 key, right? Make sure we're on this page. And then we're going to call this Topaz Labs, Denoise AI. And you can see it's a TIFF file, so we'll save that. Okay, so there's Topaz Labs, Denoise AI. Next to that, we have Lightroom's Denoise AI, and then of course we have the original RAW file. Now let me zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in to maybe like right in here. How's that look, right? Something like that. All right, so this is the original RAW file. You can see all the noise. Next to that, we have Lightroom's Denoise AI, and then next to that, we have Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Lightroom Denoise AI, Topaz Labs Denoise AI. I see a difference in here. I'm not sure if it's actually sharper or if it just looks just different. So there's Topaz Labs Denoise AI, Lightroom Denoise AI, Topaz Labs Denoise AI, Lightroom's Denoise AI. I think the Topaz Labs one is definitely sharper, particularly like looking here. See, you could see more fine feather detail in here compared to there. Let me see if I could zoom in better on this area that I'm talking about, like right in here. Okay, so this is Lightroom's Denoise AI, and next to that we have Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Lightroom's Denoise AI, Topaz Labs Denoise AI. There is a tiny bit more noise maybe here, but you could see how it it just looks like there's just more detail overall. There's the two. We're really splitting hairs. Or maybe we're splitting feathers in this case. There's the original RAW file. There is Lightroom's Denoise AI. And there is Topaz Labs Denoise AI. So, pretty good. They both did a very good job in my opinion. I do think that Topaz Labs Denoise AI is slightly better. Let me know your opinion in the comments section below. Uh, but again, I think we're kind of splitting hairs. Here, let's go maybe over here. This is the original RAW file. Here's Lightroom Denoise AI. Here is Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Lightroom Denoise AI, Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Let's go maybe in here. There's the original RAW file. Lightroom Denoise AI and Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Lightroom Denoise AI, Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Yeah, I'd say that there definitely is uh, more detail in the Topaz Labs Denoise AI, but maybe not seeing it because in the video there's gonna be some image degradation uh, just because it's a video. But me looking at it on my screen that is like 12 inches from my nose, there is a tiny bit of noise in the uh, Topaz Labs Denoise AI, just a tiny bit, uh, but it, it wouldn't be noticeable <laughs> in most instances unless you're really pixel peeping, which is a you know an infliction that I wouldn't wish upon anyone. So that's it. That's the comparison. In our next video, I'll compare it to On One's No Noise AI, and I'll use the same exact image, and I'll keep these other two results here. 
so that we could all we could compare them all to one another. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.